Hello. In this review, we'll be talking about the Israeli cruise missile, Delilah. This missile was originally developed as a drone for training anti-aircraft crews. Later, it became a sort of decoy target for air defense radars, combining the functions of a loitering munition. After that, it evolved into an anti-radiation missile, and finally became what it is today, a family of air-to-surface and surface-to-surface -surface cruise missiles capable of striking various targets and even conducting reconnaissance, merging the capabilities of a missile and a loitering munition. Today, I'll walk you through the history of this missile and explain the different versions within the Delilah family and what they are capable of. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It helps make our content better. Let's burn. The development of the Delilah cruise missile was complex and highly classified. For a long time, Israel kept secret the very fact that work on such a missile was underway. The United States played a direct role in its creation, not only by funding Israel's defense sector but also by providing technologies and research. To understand the origins of Delilah, we need to go back to one American project from the 1960s that laid the groundwork for its development. In the 1960s, the US developed an unmanned aerial vehicle called the MQM-74 Chukar, also known as the BQM-74 Chukar. I won't go into all the different versions and naming details here, that's a topic for a separate review. If you're interested, let me know in the comments, and I'll make one. What matters in this context is the emergence of such a drone in the US, its capabilities, and some variants that were later used by Israel. The Chukar drone was designed for training anti-aircraft crews. It was launched from land or ship-based platforms, allowing air defense operators to practice tracking and targeting aerial threats. This kind of training is common today, but back then, it was something new. It was originally developed in the 60s, and by the 70s, new versions were introduced, including ones used as aerial decoys to expose enemy air defense systems and radars. By the 1980s, a reconnaissance version of the Chukar drone was created. A prototype was fitted with a TV camera in the nose and a video transmission linked to the control station. In 1991, during Operation Desert Storm, a version of the Chukar drone was used again, this time mounted on an aircraft pylon and launched as a decoy to trigger enemy air defense systems and expose their positions. Both the original and upgraded MQM-74 versions were powered by turbojet engines, allowing speeds from 180 km per hour and up, depending on the modification. And visually, you can already notice that Chukar's design resembles that of the Delilah missile, and that's no coincidence. After 1973, Israel received some versions of the American Chukar drone for use and study. Following the Yom Kippur War, when Israeli aircraft were hit by Egyptian and Syrian air defense systems, primarily Soviet-made systems supplied to Arab countries, Israel began searching for ways to protect its aircraft. One key goal was to find and neutralize radar sites of these air defense systems. One of the solutions was a decoy drone like the Chukar, which could provoke enemy air defense systems into revealing their positions, allowing Israeli aircraft to then strike them. This led to the launch of a highly classified project named Delilah. The goal was to develop such a system in total secrecy. Israel didn't want Arab countries to even suspect such a weapon was in development. The project was undertaken by Israel Military Industries, now known as Elbit Systems. The first public hint that Israel was working on what would later become the Delilah missile didn't appear until 1988. Until then, all work was kept under the strictest secrecy. Initially, Israel explored the idea of developing a loitering munition that could be launched from F-4 fighter jets, which were in service with the Israeli Air Force at the time, to draw fire from enemy air defense systems. One of the concepts considered was creating a decoy that would appear on enemy radar as a full-sized aircraft rather than a drone. To achieve this, a Lunaberg lens was installed in the nose of the drone, which significantly increased its radar cross-section, making it look like a manned aircraft on radar screens. The goal was to deceive air defense radars and lure them into revealing their positions. The base version was designated Delilah AR. In terms of layout, it was essentially identical to the Chukar drone, a Lunaberg lens in the front section, control equipment behind it, wings in the center, stabilizers at the rear, and a turbojet engine powering the whole system. However, as development progressed into the 1980s, and influenced by what the Americans were doing with the Chukar, Israel decided to upgrade Delilah further. There were solid reasons behind this decision. In my review of the American AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missile, 
I mentioned that in the 1970s, shrikes were supplied to Israel to help destroy the radars of Soviet-made S-75 and S-125 air defense systems used by Egypt and Syria. Israel wanted to create its own similar missile, so they adapted the Delilah project for this role, and the result was a system codenamed Star-1, also known as Light Defender. These names were intentionally vague to prevent adversaries from understanding what the system was. This is a common practice in many countries. The Star-1 missile was approximately 3 meters long, larger than the version Delilah would eventually become. It weighed about 200 kilograms, was equipped with a passive radar homing seeker, a 30 kilograms high explosive fragmentation warhead, and a turbojet engine. The missile was designed to strike enemy air defense radars at distances of up to 400 kilometers. Its flight speed was about 0.8 Mach, which translates to roughly 980 kilometers per hour. In essence, what began as a decoy evolved into a fully capable anti-radiation missile. By 1992, the Star-1 project reached its final development stage. By the late 1990s, several prototypes had even been purchased by the U.S. Navy for testing and performance evaluation. At that time, Israel Military Industries and Boeing were also in talks about potential collaboration on the missile, but eventually, those talks fell through. Moreover, by the early 1990s, the U.S. already had its own advanced anti-radiation missile, the AGM-88 Harm. The U.S. briefly supported the Israeli missile project and even worked on its own version, but ultimately decided to shut the whole program down. Israel for its part, still planned to bring the missile to operational readiness, but it never happened. The Star-1 turned out to be too complex, expensive, and economically unviable. Additionally, in the early 90s, Israel military industries began facing financial difficulties, which prevented them from fully continuing development. A simpler solution was needed. So the decision was made to shift from a pure anti-radiation missile to a cruise missile that would combine the characteristics of both a missile and a loitering munition, making it cheaper, simpler, and more versatile. As a result, in 1994, the Delilah Air to Surface Cruise Missile officially entered service. Since then, three more variants have been developed, Delilah SL, sea launched version, designed to be launched from ship-based platforms. Delilah HL, helicopter launched version, adapted for deployment from helicopters. Delilah GL, ground launched version, launched from multiple rocket launcher systems such as Lynx and Pulse. The first combat use of the Delilah missile was in 2006, during the Second Lebanon War, launched from F-16 fighter jets. In fact, both the F-4 Phantom and F-16 are carriers of the missile. Other compatible platforms include the A-4 Skyhawk and the F-A-18 Hornet. Since 2006, the Delilah has been used in various operations, including in Gaza and against Syrian and Iranian targets. As for the price, there is no verified public information about the cost of a Delilah missile. So that's the story of how this missile came to be. And now, let's take a closer look at the specific version of the Delilah that's launched from aircraft. At the front of the missile is the guidance head, which features both electro-optical and infrared sensors. The video feed from the seeker is transmitted in real time to the display in the cockpit of the carrier aircraft, allowing the pilot to retarget the missile mid-flight or even abort the strike. This capability is made possible by the man in the loop technology. For example, if the pilot sees that the target has moved or is no longer a priority, they can cancel the strike. The missile will then gain altitude and begin to loiter over the area, searching for a new target. That's why I previously mentioned that Delilah combines the capabilities of both a cruise missile and a loitering munition. The seeker works day and night, and can detect and lock onto targets at a range of up to 16 kilometers. Delilah also features automatic target tracking technology and is equipped with a two-way data link. The Luneberg lens, installed in the missile's nose to increase its radar signature, has been retained, the developers decided not to remove it. Behind the seeker is the control and navigation system, which includes an inertial navigation system and a GPS receiver. Following that is the warhead section, which typically houses a 30 kilograms high explosive fragmentation warhead, though other types of warheads can be used, with a total payload capacity of up to 54 kg. In the central part of the missile are the wings, which span 1.1 meters. Behind that is the fuel compartment, and in the rear is the turbojet engine, the Bet Shemesh BS-175. The missile is also equipped with X-shaped tail fins for stability and has an air intake located on the underside. 
Delilah can reach speeds from 0.3 to 0.7 Mach, which is up to approximately 857 km per hour. When diving toward the target, it accelerates to around 0.85 Mach. The missile is 2.7 meters long, 33 centimeters in diameter, and weighs about 185 kg. It is launched from an MAU-12 pylon. Target data and flight trajectory are preloaded into the missile before launch. After launch, it can fly autonomously to the target along a preset route, which also increases its resistance to electronic jamming. Delilah is capable of striking both stationary and moving targets, as long as they are moving at speeds up to 60 km per hour. Its circular error probable is approximately 1 meter. In the early 2000s, the first upgraded version of the Delilah missile was introduced. The helicopter launched version of the missile is designated Delilah HL. This version was adapted for deployment from the UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter and its variants, including the S-70 and MH-60 Seahawk. The missile retains the same range and operational principles as the original version. The next variant is called Delilah SL. This is the sea-launched version, designed for deployment from naval vessels, capable of striking both land and surface targets. To maintain the same effective range as the base version, this variant is equipped with a booster attached to the rear of the missile. The final variant developed is Delilah GL, designed for use with the Lynx multiple launch rocket system, and later also used with the Pulse multiple launch rocket system. Like the sea launch version, Delilah GL also uses a booster stage, which is jettisoned a few seconds after launch. The maximum altitude for both ground-launched and sea-launched versions is 9,000 meters. In the 1990s, Israel attempted to purchase Tomahawk missiles from the United States, but the deal never materialized. One of the alternatives pursued was the development of a missile like Delilah. Of course, Delilah couldn't fully replace the Tomahawk in terms of capabilities, but considering Israel's geographic location and its strategic needs, Delilah is sufficient for many of its operational goals. For more extensive missions, other missile systems are available. That was the story of the Delilah cruise missile. I hope this video was both interesting and informative for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. That's all from me, wishing you peaceful skies. Take care.